Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It has come to pass that I'm joining in with another care collab. Um, Zygopetalums this time. These have been the bane of my life, covering a period of many years. But in recent times, they've started behaving themselves because I've changed my ways with regards to those plants. Anyway, as is traditional with the Care Collabs, we will start <laughs> in an orchid growing environment far, far away with the other channels taking part. apparent to me that in the past I, I may have forgotten the care bit and just shown the plants so I thought I'd do a we'll do the care bit as, as the first bit and we'll have a look at my uh, my psychos afterwards um, now the whole idea of the care collab um, is basically to get different methods of growing based on different parts of the world and or different environments and with growing orchids that is quite important and it's the bit that a lot of people forget when they're watching YouTube videos. What's absolutely perfect for a type of orchid in one person's country and or environment and may be totally wrong for somebody else to try those methodologies. And this applies in the main to watering, feeding, temperatures light and media and that's everything <laughs> don't think I've missed anything there did I but yeah the type of media you use is often geared up to your environment and again one type of media in a type of environment might be brilliant and might be totally wrong for somebody else an example um, I've switched to a mix of cocoa husk as it was recommended to me specifically the zygos, with some bark mixed in. Why did I mix some bark in when the cocoa husk is perfect for other people in their environment? Perhaps they're a bit warmer, therefore can chuck more water in and keep their plants moister all the time. But because I've got lower night temperatures in the winter, that may not be a good idea. So by adding a bit of bark in, I allow the plant to dry a little bit quicker. Yeah, so media can be very important. In some environments, you could grow in moss and keep it soaking wet and the plants would be fine. A lot of the zygo species do actually grow on the ground. Some of them grow up in the trees, but quite a few grow on the ground and they come from very boggy, damp areas. So you, you, know, you could get the impression, oh, these need to be wet all the time. Yeah, well, in some environments, if you try that, you'll end up with no roots. So it does vary so much. And like I say, what will work for one may not work for another. So what I do is go over what I do. <laughs> so I use a mix of the cocoa husk, which holds moisture for quite a bit longer than bark. Yeah. But the mix of the two gives a nice balance so that when I've got the warmer temperatures, I water more often. And when I haven't got those warm temperatures, because I'm not prepared to pay for that amount of heat, then they dry a bit quicker and don't stay soggy. Because soggy with low temperatures is not good. Um, now a lot of the advice I got came from Michael McCarthy. Um, I've adapted it slightly, because obviously with different parts of the world again. Um, but the problem I've got is his advice said, keep them growing. Keep the temperatures up a bit, yeah? keep the light higher, feed them well, keep them growing, make them be vigorous. Now I know that sounds like a strange statement to hear, but you make them be vigorous by giving them an environment that's conducive to growing. 
and get the best out of them that you can. I can't do that because I'm not prepared to pay for that level of heat in the winter. So mine slow down in the winter, although at the moment it doesn't look like they are. That's luck more than judgment, I think. So media is a very important choice from soggy, wet, because you've got the heat, you've got the light, you've got the long days on a permanent basis, you can keep them growing all the time. They'll need that moisture. If, you, if, if they're in an environment like that, they will need that moisture. However, if you can't achieve that, I got short days, low night temperatures, and today I've had to reduce the thermostat because I've got a low day temperature. We had a white frost this morning. This is a big airspace, and I've got the lounge door open, and instead of warming this place up, it's chilled the lounge down. <laughs> it's taken all my heat. <laughs> um, so I've had to turn the thermostat down to stop the fan and the heater coming on. I'll turn it back on again, or turn it up again in a minute. I just reduce the temperature. It shuts it off for a bit. But yes, yeah, cold last night. You get a really long cold spell, I'll have trouble keeping my night temperatures up. And the day temperatures will stay the same as the night temperatures. That's not good. Differential is important more so to some orchids than others. But you do what you can. So that's media out of the way. Adjust your media to your environment. The cooler your environment, with the possibility of your plants slowing up and not growing vigorously, and then you don't want the roots staying soggy. Some say they should never dry out. Mine go virtually dry, but because they've got the cocoa husk mixed in, although looking through the clear pot, the outside and the top look dry, they're not. If you poke your finger down in, there's still some moisture in the centre of the pot, so they're not totally dry, even though they might look it. Um, but best not to let them dry out, and if they do, not for any length of time at all. And you can only keep them constantly wet if they're, if they're in a growing mode and in an environment that's conducive to that, otherwise go steady. Now, light levels, again, following advice from others, you will read in the books and the ancient scrolls and the runes that these are shade lovers. Well, if you keep them in the shade, they're not going to grow very fast. And if they don't grow very fast, they might not push out enough roots to support them. And this is where you come into the conflict of interests. Um, a zygo without roots is difficult to recover. The roots are so important with the zygos, but light levels if you push your light levels up a bit, especially if you've only got short days like me at the moment, my zygos are in bright light, as opposed to, say, where the restrepias are, relatively speaking. But I've got, I've got short days. I've only got eight hours of daylight at the moment. Well, a bit more than that, but not a lot. And we get a lot of cloudy days as well as that in the UK. So they're never going to get what you would consider really good light at this time of year. So they slow down. And if they slow down, they don't want to be kept wet. But if you keep them in better light than is recommended, it puts a bit of vigour into the plant. Now this is experimental. It's been tried and tested, yeah? But if you give them more, they will grow better. And if they grow better, they're more vigorous. And if they're more vigorous, they put out more roots and they stay healthy and happy. Yeah, so it, it, it's a strange concept. Now, some orchids that are classed as shady, you know, if you give them brighter light, they ain't gonna like it. But the zygos seem to like it. You'll know if you're giving them too much light because you will start getting pale patches on your leaves. They will start to pale and not have that nice lush green look that they have. Right, temperatures, I go down to 15 at night. And today I'm only up to 16 in the daytime. <laughs> That's an odd day. We don't get low temperatures like this too often in the UK winters, but sometimes we can get a cold snap and get snow and the whole flipping lot. It doesn't happen as often here on the south coast of the UK anyway. But I would say that these are intermediate and you can push them up the warm end of intermediate and again, they'll start growing a bit quicker and a bit better because you've given them a bit more even though the books say don't. A lot of the books class zygos as cool growers. Um, given the type of forest they come from, if you look at those environments and the places in, on the planet that are involved, I would doubt they're cool growers somehow. 
Um, so somebody's not quite right there, I think. Um, mine, all of my place here is intermediate, yeah? I try and do my best to keep those temperatures at intermediate. Now, intermediate has a minimum of 12. Technically, you know, again, in the books, and some of the nurseries will give that advice. Um, I would say 12 is too cold for zygos. I think they ought to be warmer than that. Um, if you take somebody like Insa, because he grows in his home, and his home is centrally heated, he never gets cold, unless his heating breaks, I suppose, and it happens to be cold outside. Well, that's bad luck rather than, you know, an actual working environment. So his don't get cold, yeah? And I'm sure there's other people in different parts of the world where they can't do cold, you know, without some sort of air cooler. So um, I would suggest that they grow better and if they're growing better, they'll stay healthier and you won't get so many problems and they won't stress out and all that sort of stuff if they're up the warmer end of intermediate. So um, that's temps. We've done light levels, we've done media, you know, watering and feeding. It is said that these can take higher levels of food. I always question high levels of feed for orchids on the grounds that I sort of think, well, where would they get that in the wild then if that was a species? Now, I know you can include with hybrids what's deemed hybrid vigour. In other words, that species and that species and then crossed again with that one and that hybrid's brought in and somehow or other it generates a more vigorous plant than any of its original elements. And that is true. It does happen. But not always. You can get hybrid weakness where deficiencies have been brought in and the things just don't grow very well. <laughs> Nelly Isla, I rest my case. <laughs> um, anyway, with zygos, um, water them as they head towards dryness. That's my advice. Feed. Um, this time of year, mine, mine aren't growing vigorously, so they get fed the same as all the other pots. This growing season, I will have two feeding regimes, regimes for my pots. I will have those that are not vigorous growers, and if a plant is not a vigorous grower, there's no point in pumping food into it, it's not going to use it, is it? However, if a plant is being, cap being capable of vigorous growth, then it might be just the feed that triggers that and pushes it. So it is deemed zygos like a good bit of feed. Um, the figures I've seen on some of the other videos um, would be classed at my top end. That doesn't mean to say I won't do it. Yeah? Every now and again a set of my pots get a higher level of feed. Zygos would be included. Um, so there we go. So that will do, um, and the piece of the care information that may get forgotten in some other um, sort of elements, but um, it is critical to repot zygos at the right time. There are two types of right time. One, the media is breaking down and the roots are starting to go, and that's enforced right time, because if you leave it, you may well lose your plant. And then the real right time, it is when you see the new roots coming. And it will vary, not only from plant to plant, but on the same hybrid in different environments. They start their new growth, and they push that new growth on. And at some point, the roots will come. Now, the roots on zygos are ultra-sensitive. They don't like being disturbed, basically. <laughs> so a media that lasts a nice long time is a good idea, which is why, personally, I wouldn't use moss. But if you think about repotting one that's in moss, you don't even have to touch the roots, do you? You can just run that under the tap, and the moss will wash off. And it's unlikely to be stuck to the roots to any great extent. But it's imperative when you repot to just leave the roots alone as much as you possibly can let the old media fall off don't poke don't pull don't shove just get that media off as gently as possible and avoid getting these grubby things on your roots because believe it or not your hands are dirty now i know a lot of people wear gloves i can't be dealing with gloves um but you know 
Get your hands clean before you start. Don't touch the roots unless you absolutely have to. And gently tease off old media. And if you touch a piece of old media and it won't let go of the root, leave it there. They bruise so easily. So that's the most important factor I would pass on, is be as gentle as possible when repotting, otherwise you lose your old set of roots, and make sure that when you repot, you've got a new set of roots coming. If they haven't already started, you know your plant well enough to know that they're coming very soon. Because if you lose your old set, and you're not in a position to get a new set growing, your plant will go down quite quickly. Bulbs will desiccate, leaves will start to drop on old bulbs, and it will not be a happy bunny. That I can verify from experience, because I've killed four. I was the captain of the club. I kill zygos. Duly elected. <laughs> and I'd given up on the ratty little toads, because I just couldn't grow them. I couldn't get my head round them. And in the end I got one that just happened to be a reasonable plant and then got some advice prior to messing it up. You know, you could sort of, you get people that their mindset says, oh, every time I get a new plant, I always repot it. Well, that could be the downfall of a zygo, repotting it at the wrong time. So watch your repotting. It's very important to not mess the roots about. Don't touch them unless you absolutely have to, and don't force old media off of a root if it's attached. It will damage that root and the chances are it will die. So just go very, very careful. And don't go pushing and shoving when you put your new media in either. Do it gently, let it fall into place. And that is a reason why I repot using dry media as best as I can. Dry media will fall and tumble and get into all the crevices and all the little holes. Wet media will stick and it will leave gaps. And with zygos, it's better not to have those that, that gaps. It likes to touch. And that goes back to the fact that many of the species grow on the ground. They don't necessarily grow in the dirt. They're not like dirt orchids, but they're on the ground. So they're in amongst the leaf litter and other plant roots and stuff like that. So they're touching. Well, you get a lot of plants that grow on trees, quite a few of the roots are hanging in the air. And they don't touch anything. Zygos should do. Right. Ugh. That's enough of that nonsense. Right, I've got three zygos. Um, these, this is one of them. And um, this is the one that has the sort of bluey coloured, wishy-washy, pastel-y coloured blooms. And I didn't buy this one for the blooms, I bought this one, it's gonna, this is going to sound funny, I bought this one because it wasn't a very good plant. And it was an experiment with my mindset. Have I really got the hang of zygos now? Because if I can take a bad plant that had poor roots and was not in a very good state and pull it on, then obviously I've cracked it. And this pushed up a nice new growth that promptly pushed up two spikes which have not long gone out of bloom. Yeah, so it's a no ID hybrid. Well, that's what it says, although some people have uh, tried to name it. And what we're waiting for now is um, this growth will mature a bit, um, so the bulb will form and swell up a bit. But the next thing this plant is going to do is produce a new growth, which may or may not spike. That's not a strong plant, not strong at all. But out of the bulbs that I've got, they're not desiccated. There's some weird shaped ones, oval, rounded, egg-shaped, non-existent because <laughs> it's a new growth. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's got, it's got roots and it's got root activity. That's the important bit for me. Because without good roots and good root activity, the top ain't going to do so well. So this one's okay. There's active root tips in there and it's got a root system. It's not dynamic. It's not bursting at the seams, but it's got some. And it's grown most of those since I got it. So that's that one. Uh, right, then we've got this one. Which one's this? This is the hybrid, the same as the last one, except for it's nothing like the last one. Um, this is a bigger, stronger plant. Um, and it's possibly going to have two leads, but I don't know whether that's actually going to be achieved. Now, I had to play with this one because it started to climb out of the pot. So it actually got a repot without repotting. It got gently teased out of the pot, 
some mo media moved around that it left behind in the pot, not the media that stuck to the plant, and gently put back in and the media tucked down the sides because it was too far out. It was climbing. And the new growth that was climbing is here. And you can see that it's now been set low enough that that set of new roots has gone straight down into the media. Now, it hasn't long done that, so they haven't reached the side of the pot yet. Okay? But nonetheless, this latest growth has two spikes. Got one pushing up here and one pushing up here. The growth itself is almost non-existent. <laughs> it's got a couple of bract leaves and one leaf sticking out the top. But nonetheless, it's got two spikes and that leaf's got some scale on it. We don't want scale on zygos. But, you know, I mean, in these temperatures, I've got to go very careful with sprays. We don't want to get the plants too wet because um, they won't dry in the daytime. I've got the heat. But we've got new roots, we've got spikes, this one's hanging in there, and its existing leaves aren't too bad. Not too bad. Uh, previous growth was here. Um, that's not fully fattened up, quite honestly. Um, so I'm just watching out. I'm just trying to find where the central gathering of these scale are, or whether it's just a few that have dropped off another plant, which is highly likely. I can't find them down in the leaf joints, which is where they like to get. So it's just a few on a leaf. We won't worry about that too much. Um, that's the other thing that doesn't do too well here in the winter time is the scale. It's too cold for them, they don't like it. <laughs> so they slow up as well, so they're a lot easier to handle. Um, and like I say, with any bugs, if you see it, kill it. Don't leave it till next time. That's what I'm doing now, I'm just looking round and I will squash them with my finger and thumb as I come across them. Or wipe them off. Like that one, that's an adult, so we get that one off with our thumbnail and then squish it. Another adult there. Inside those little shell-like things is a female and probably eggs. So when you hook that off with your nail, rub the leaf where it was, and there are any eggs left behind which are probably near enough invisible, hopefully you've got rid of, and the thing, the scale bit that you've taken off, just make sure you squish it. Don't just drop it on the floor. <laughs> anyway, so that's that one. Two spikes coming on there, so we're doing okay. And, and the leaves, not too bad. There's an old leaf, old leaf here on a very old pseudo bulb that's going yellow. That will go soon. But not too bad. Not too bad. And then the one that I got... Oh, let's, have, let's have some coffee. The one that I got as a repeat, because I lost the original one, and I lost a good zygo. My original Luisendorf was a nice plant. It bloomed, it was happy, I repotted it, and it went downhill and died. Because I did it wrong. But having got some advice that now says I should know what I'm doing with repotting zygos, I got another one. Which has been repotted, hopefully at the right time. Um, and basically it's doing a climber. So what we've got over here is a growth that pushed some roots out that has a new shoot. But that new shoot doesn't seem to be progressing. It just seems to be sat there. So it may not mature, it may not grow. It may just stall. Yeah. And then over here we have our latest new growth, which is climbing. Yeah? You can see the bulb that it's come off of is not quite sat in the media and it's decided that it will now grow a new one a bit higher up than the one it had before. Yeah? Nonetheless, the roots have gone down in the pot. We've got active roots in this pot, um, quite a substantial root system on this one. There's little, little active roots showing all over the place. They're difficult to see because this is an opaque pot. I've got these types of pots as a trial to see if they'd stop the algae. Um, it saves having to put them inside a black pot. Um, so anyway, the latest growth here does have a spike. So uh, I think this this is just going to have the one. See, now on the Luisendorf, the actual growth gets going quite well before the spike shows and pushes out. Whereas on the other one, the growth hardly exists and the two spikes are pushing on. So they do vary. So um, this one's doing okay. Um, Huge big fat pseudo bulb in the middle and several other nice plump bulbs. I've only got one bulb on here that looks a bit desiccated and it's the oldest one, so we won't worry about that. 
But yeah, so and that's my Louise and Dorf. That's the only one that's got a, a name as such. And um, it does have wonderful blooms. So that's my three. I do have a relative of the Zygos, Pabstia, which was sent to me by um, Spices Ossic um, as a challenge plant. It was added into an order as a challenge plant. See if you can grow and bloom that again, which I have. <laughs> it's a Zygo relative, but I don't class it as a close enough relative to include it. So those are my three and my advice. And don't forget, you, if you have an environment that's similar to mine, the advice could be very useful. If you have an environment totally different to mine, my advice might be a waste of space. Don't forget to bear that in mind, which is what this Care Collab thing is all about. And if you're watching this and you think this Care Collab seems like quite a good idea, well, it originated from the channel Ninja Orchids, which is one of the list on mine. And um, if you go to that channel, you can leave a comment there um, to say that you would like to join. And as long as there's an email involved, um, the channel host will get back to you with all the details about what you need to do to join in. Now obviously if you don't do videos, that's going to be difficult. But if you're a channel that does videos, especially if you're starting out, joining in with the Care Collabs, providing you have the plants that have been selected for the Care Collab, obviously, and that's part of the deal is you give your list of plants in, so that as the list comes up on the database we're doing this plant, I've been told that these are the channels that have got this plant and they get an email. So that's how it sort of works. But um, yeah, if you feel like you think you want to join in, and it's very suitable for newer channels because they'll get mentioned by many other channels. And a link to their channel will be in those channels' descriptions for their Care Collab video. It helps get you noticed. It's a, you know something that the, the larger channels can do to help the smaller channels. So, um, and it works. So, you know, if you want to join in, contact Ninja Orchids and show your interest and I'm sure you'll be invited in. So that's my take. That's been waffling on long enough. So I was just reminded me of Insa did a lovely intro to his Care Collab and he did a drawing, you know, a, a drawing, hand drawing representing each channel and my channel was represented by a waffle maker. I think that's a bit cheeky, but I laughed. That's good enough. You've got to have a joke now and again, haven't you? <laughs> it's not all serious. Right, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.